So welcome everybody. I think you all know me. My name is Katie Wright. I'm the director of the Beds Movement, and I'm really excited to share with you tonight uh, kind of a big picture look at the Beds Movement. But first, I want to introduce my colleague, Dr. Josephine Grima, who has been involved with us at the beginning, as from the beginning as well. So, Joe, would you like to say a couple words and say hi? Sure. Uh, so I'm Josephine Green. I'm the Chief Science Officer for the Foundation. I've been working with Katie uh, the last three years in developing the movement, um, and I'm very excited to be here and work with the whole community. Thanks, Joe. I know that uh, you've been a major contributor to helping us get everything accomplished, and um, we couldn't have done it without you. So thank you for, for being involved from the beginning. I'm going to go ahead and share my slideshow now. Okay, so this is a big picture look for our community of the Beds Movement, which is a division of the Marfan Foundation. I want to start with a little bit of an origin story. Back in 2019, uh, the foundation, along with a number of other organizations, was involved in the Beds Collaborative, which was a project um, being run by Shireen Shalhoub and Peter Byers out of the University of Washington. And the Marfan Foundation in April of 2019 really announced its intent to develop a division specifically for people with vascular Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome or VEDS. So throughout that year, the foundation gathered a steering committee of thought leaders to kind of guide their vision in that. And in October of 2019, I joined the foundation and we launched the division, which is now known as the VEDS Movement. So we've been going since October of 2019. Our mission is to save lives and improve the quality of life of individuals with VEDS, and we pursue the most innovative research. We educate the medical community, the general public, people with VEDS, and we really believe in providing support to patients, families, and caregivers. And we believe that we can charge forward and improve the outcomes for those living with VEDS. And I just want to uh, make a brief note about that word charge forward. Our tagline is charging forward, saving lives, which comes from Kathy Bowen, who was on our steering committee at the outset and had a major impact on, on where we started. So she came up with that charging forward, saving lives. And it reminds me of that every time I see it. We have a number of values that guide what we do. We believe in putting families at the heart of everything that we do, because we know that that's not only affects people with the condition, but always also those around them. We believe in vigilance and getting people diagnosed. We know that beds undiagnosed can be tragic, and we believe in getting that diagnosis earlier because a diagnosis followed by man proper management can save lives. We constantly push innovation forward. Uh, we come up with creative strategies to advance research and provide support and really share very accurate information with our community. We create a path if there isn't a clear one. We know that the community is in need of support, education, and research, and we drive progress forward by creating these paths to success. And we believe in building a welcome and effective community. We know that partnerships are very much key to success, and we initiate collaborations with those who help us get there. There are a number of organizations we collaborate with. We build connections across the community. And we believe in building a community that welcomes people who are affected by VEDS as well as those who are struggling to get an accurate diagnosis. We do know that there is a challenge for people in getting that diagnosis. There's a challenge sometimes or barriers in place to getting that genetic test. And we really believe in building creative strategies to help them get the testing that they need and get the support they need. So I'm gonna give an overview of our programs, resources, and services. There's a lot that we do, and I know that I can't cover everything here, but I've tried to give a brief overview. We have a number of free community resources. Um, the newest one I think that we have are these free medical IDs that are offered through our emergency awareness program or project. And that's, this is available to people who have a confirmed diagnosis of VEDS via genetic testing. So free medical IDs are available on our website. We've done a number of webinars over the last three and a half years featuring experts from around the world on different aspects of VEDS, whether it's lungs, um, like uterine health, pregnancy, genetics, really a lot of different topics. 
We have an emergency preparedness kit and wallet card on our website. The picture on the right is a picture of the wallet card that's available at the end of the emergency preparedness kit. And this is available for free on our website and it's to help you build your emergency preparedness kit in case you have to use it. Um, there's also an emergency physician information line in that packet. And that is not only for emergency physicians, but also for you as a community, if you need to put it on speakerphone in the emergency room or whatever you need to do uh, to get it, to try to get the best care that you can in an emergency situation. We know that's critical. There are a number of free support groups on our website that meet most of them every month including kids club and teen groups through the Mark N Foundation. So the support groups really range from um, a parents group that's very lively, a parents of adults group. We have a newer, younger adult group that was started in collaboration with the Mark N Foundation and really just a number of groups available. And these are all for free on Zoom. And the list goes on. We have a health and resource center staffed by a registered nurse. Her name is Jan Lynch and she is awesome. And you can reach out to her with questions. She will connect you with the doctors or try to get the answer to your question from the experts and relay that back to you or your doctor. We have a website which was started just two months, actually a month and a half after we started the VEDS movement, maybe two months, we launched our website, which has all of these resources. It's thevedsmovement.org. On that website, there's an institutional directory, which is a list of institutions around the country that are known to have a number of patients with VEDS and are comfortable um, really guiding that care. There's exercise guidelines available on our website, which is available through the Marfan Foundation as well. They really overlap. Early on, we started, we developed this teacher guide and school nurse guide. So these packets are here on the right-hand side pictured. These are pretty dense packets of information that you can give the school nurse and the teacher so that your, your child has uh, the best possible school experience for them. And that we launched that very early on. There's a pediatric hospitality program that's actually run by a family with Marfan syndrome. And that is open to people with VEDS. And I believe that it provides kind of like a, a goodie pack or a care, care pack for kids who are in the hospital. So that's available on our website as well. And there's a community corner on our website that features stories from members of our community. And if you'd like to check that out and also submit your own story, you can do that on our website, thevedsmovement.org. In addition to those free resources, there are a number of paid resources. I kind of categorize them that way because they aren't free, but there are scholarships available for some of them. So we have symposiums around the country featuring regional experts and opportunities to connect with other regional families. We have a big conference, uh, usually every year. Pandemic kind of threw a wrench in that for a little while, but we still had virtual conference during that. And that is it was just announced yesterday, I believe, or today, that our conference is going to be in Chicago this year, July 13th to 16th, and registration is now open. So if you uh, missed that announcement, head over to markband.org and type in conference in the search bar, and I think you'll be able to find it that way pretty easily. There's also Camp for Victory. There's a number of family camps and kids camps around the country. I think there's three or four of them this year. And it's a place for kids and families to get together and just have fun in a very safe way. In addition to the resources for our community members, we offer a number of medical community resources. Again, our Help and Resource Center is available to your doctors. So if you want them to submit the question there, you can ask them to do that. And Jan will connect them to the experts. We have a free continuing medical education course and continuing nursing education course for certain med emergency medical providers. This is through our emergency awareness project and it's free for doctors and nurses who are part of like the American College of Emergency Physicians or ASAP, uh, the Emergency Nurses Association, uh, we really are trying to get those emergency providers to take this course and educate themselves so that the community members have a better experience in the emergency room with providers that know what that's is. Obviously, our website's available. There's research grant opportunities for the foundation that we'll talk about in a little bit. 
And there's also an emergency physician fact sheet and that emergency physician information line that I mentioned earlier is also pictured on the right. There's a first responder quick guide that was developed by a member of our steering committee, Morgan Joswiak. And we worked with her to develop that into a nice, neat PDF that can be downloaded from our website and given to first responders. There's also instructions through the Markman Foundation for a patient care coordination note in EPIC. EPIC is an electronic health record system. If you've ever used anything like MyChart, that's powered by EPIC. And a patient care coordination note is really meant for emergency rooms or other providers that you see to have a quick note that shows what beds is and what the risks are so that it pops up when you're in the emergency room. So if you don't have that, head over to thebedsmovement.org and grab that and ask your doctor to put it in your chart um, to try to help in emergencies. We also recently published three physician reference sheets, one for pulmonology, one for gastroenterology, and one for primary care physicians. So these are available on our website. You can download them in the health, health provider, um, section of our website and give them to your physicians or any physician can download them for free from there. And I believe that more should be coming out in the future. There is a paid medical community resource. It's the VED CME and also a CNE for nurses. And it's about, 50, I think it's $59 right now. We partnered with the Sullivan Group to get this published. And it's for, it's to really increase awareness and diagnosis of VEDs among not only emergency physicians, but nurses and advanced practice clinicians. So that is available on our website. As I mentioned, you know, we do plan additional physician reference sheets in the future. This is a, a snippet of the primary care physician sheet on the right-hand side. And in addition to that, we did uh, secure with up-to-date um, updated guidance by Peter, Byer, Peter Byers on beds. Up-to-date is the most trusted evidence-based clinical resource available to physicians. Uh, they use it in their office. So if you ever see the doctor like pull up something on their computer, I saw it just yesterday at my doctor's appointment at the top, it's, I could see that they were searching through up to date. So this is a really critical update, I believe, because a lot of physicians use this information at the point of care when you're in the office. And then when we get this updated, it will be a separate section on beds. And right now, beds is kind of buried in the Ellers Downloads section and it's kind of hard to understand. So we think that this will really impact a lot of um, knowledge for physicians at the point of care. We also have a research program through the Markman Foundation. I'll let Joe talk about that in just a minute as our chief science officer. But first, I want to let you know that the VEDS Collaborative is now powered by the VEDS movement. This was really started to connect the VEDS community to researchers and medical community to drive patient-centered research. And in the last year, we haven't had a lot of meetings, but we did meet to start an emergency experience survey that should be going out later this year. In addition to that, we co-host the VED Science Meeting with the DeFi Foundation. The last one had over 200 researchers and physicians in attendance in person on the VED Day in Paris. And that's a really impactful uh, thing. It's a, way that we, it's a way that we can see interest in VEDs grow among the medical community and researchers, researchers as well. So I'm going to pass it over to Joe now to talk more about the research program at the Marfan Foundation. Thanks. Thanks, Katie. Um, so the Marfan Foundation has a grant program. It's run yearly, um, and we have diff several different mechanisms to provide grants to researchers that are in different stages of their career. So, for example, we have a fellowship grant. It, that is for anybody that has completed a uh, postdoctoral, uh, that has completed their Ph.D., and is in training under a mentor. Um, we have uh, a mechanism for faculty members that are more senior. We have uh, a mechanism for those that are first getting their first permanent position or faculty member, uh, and we call that the Career Development uh, Grant Award. All of these grants are for $100,000 um, over two years, and we specifically ask for um, grants in the area of VEDS 
Lois Dietz and Marfan and have supported uh, grants for specifically for VEDS research. This year, we also uh, did one of our largest grant mechanisms. It's new for the foundation, um, and that's to provide a, a much larger amount over four years to a, um, a research project that's really um, going to help transform uh, the health care for these patients. That's called the Everest Grant, and that can provide up to $880,000 over the four years. Thank you so much, Joe. And I see that there is a question in the Q&A. We will get to questions at the end. So go ahead and put your questions in the Q&A as, as they come up for you, and we'll have time at the end. Thank you so much, Joe, for uh, going over the research program. I know it's really important to us as a community. There's a number of other things that we do. Um, we've done, we've connected community members to different awareness and education opportunities. We did a grand rounds with the hospital. Uh, we've connected individuals in the community to different podcasts where they can raise awareness. And a number of members of our community um, kind of initiate that on their own and then ask us for help on, you know, how to phrase things and you know how to get ready for that, which we really appreciate and support. There's been some articles that we've been able to do both in medical journals and in magazines where it's like a, I think it was called EP Magazine. We featured Francis Marin and Bella Marin early on in our journey with the vets movement. And that's a magazine that goes to um, usually like families and parents and it's medically driven. So it's an opportunity to raise awareness in that way of vets and um, is wonderful. We also participate in medical education opportunities. Our, one of our steering com committee members, uh, Morgan Josiak, presented at an EMS conference. We've had another steering committee member present at the Emergency Nurse Association conference. We've done the grand rounds. There's student education that we've participated in and members of our community have participated in. And we also advocate for updated medical guidelines and information. The recent ACC guidelines that came out, I think mentioned beds more than ever before. Like there was more information, more research that had been published that was available to reference. And these things really take a long time to um, result in updated guidelines because you have to have solid backed research to update a guideline. But we really like to see that it's referenced more. There's uh, more accurate knowledge being shared in that. And it's the road to improved guidelines, I think. We also do Beds Action Month in October. This is a month where, you know, community members get together and do different things to advocate for beds, whether it's meeting your first responders or participating in a fundraiser or, you know, saying thank you to your doctors or, you know, visiting an emergency room. There's a lot of things that you can do during Beds Action Month to really join in the effort to uh, raise awareness for beds and educate. So I'm going to briefly talk about fundraising and support because this is another thing that we do. And I was digging through our pictures, and this is an awesome picture, I think, of one of our team members at, of Team Beds in Houston. And uh, I just love it. <laughs> so fundraising and support, I want to talk about why this is important. Because without fundraising or major donations or volunteer support, we really could not provide all the programs and services that we're passionate about as an organization. All the programs that we were able to do in the last three years that we mentioned in the slideshow are a result of support from you, the community, and support from our volunteers. And if we hadn't had that support, I don't think that we would have been as successful in really achieving everything that we've been able to publish. So. Thank you for your support about that. And it is really important. There's a number of different ways that we fundraise or have fundraised in the past. We have an annual birthday bash, which you know I don't think will be a fundraiser this year, maybe just a celebration of everything that we do and everything our community has accomplished. But the birthday bash is a great way that we've been able to raise funds for the last three years and celebrate our community. We get a lot of money through individual donations, which is important. That's just uh, you know, going on our website and donating online or setting up a recurring donation. I think that this also encompasses like workplace donations. If you're able to get your workplace to do a match, that's been pretty successful for a lot of people. 
There is also a program called Cookies for Vets that was launched by Sarah Jeffs and her family. So she's pictured here in this picture. And future donations to Cookies for Vets will go to Vets Research Funding. Last year, this, this was a pilot project, and this year we expect to launch it and have it be a much easier process to, you know, host your own cookie pop-up or, you know, cookie stand um, and just have it be something that you do. I don't know how many cookies are on this table, but it's a lot of cookies, and they were very successful. I think we raised more than $10,000 in the pilot project. There's a number of foundation fundraisers. As a part of the Marfan Foundation, we can participate in all the Marfan Foundation fundraisers. Uh, the foundation does a research drive. There's Giving Tuesday that you'll see. There's an annual membership campaign. And then there's also something called the Walk for Victory. And I think we have VEDS teams this year at every single Walk for Victory, which is amazing. Uh, this is a really important fundraiser. And it's not only important just for the fundraising, but also because it's a way to connect with other community members in your area. So this picture on the right was actually taken just this past weekend at the Walk for Victory in Southern California. And every member of this picture is part of our vets community in one way or another. And it was a great time to just get together. We hung out after the walk. It was hung out the night before the walk. Like it's, it's not only about the fundraising, but it's about that connection and building that community. And that's why I love it so much. So you can join a Walk for Victory. There's a number of them going on this year. And as long as you uh, put VEDS in your team name, that funding will go, any funds that you raise will go to the VEDS movement, which is a division of the Marfan Foundation. Uh, the Marfan Foundation also hosts like galas, or I think they're called Evening with Heart. And if you want to donate auction items to those events, any auction items that you donate, if you indicate that this is a VEDS, a VEDS auction item, then the money that's raised at that auction for that item will go to the VEDS movement as well. And that's pretty exciting. So I've never actually been to a gala because I started right before the pandemic, but I hope to go uh, to one of them someday. There's also, we, we get some money through our bonfire store. Bonfire is the name of the company that makes all our merchandise. And there's just a couple of them pictured here, but there's jackets, hats, t-shirts, tote bags, and it's a small number of funds, but it's also a way to get the awareness out about beds with items that you like to wear. Um, I like the sleeping with your eyes open thing because that's a thing in our community that I think a lot of us can relate to. Um, and so we have merchandise for that if you wanna raise awareness of that. And there's also community events and community events are things that like you, the community members do kind of on your own and donate the money. So there's been garage sales, there have been cookie sales, uh, Ro Nania, a member of our steering committee does a comedy fundraiser every year. There's golf tournaments, bowling, there's all sorts of things that you could do if you wanted to raise money for the vets movement and we can send you brochures or or bracelets or something like that to hand out. And we really appreciate that kind of support as well. And I don't wanna miss out on talking about volunteers because I think volunteers is a really, like volunteers are kind of at the core of what we do. And I believe in building that program out. We started two volunteer teams this year that are specific to the VEDS movement. One is a speaker series for people who are interested in doing a grand rounds at some point or comfortable in talking about their story to medical professionals, um, you can sign up for this grand rounds team. And basically, if there's a doctor doing a grand rounds in your area, we can then, we know that we're, we can reach out to you to say, hey, this is going on. Would you like to speak at it? In addition, a lot of the grand rounds for vets that we've seen happen because a community member kind of takes that initiative and goes to their doctor at their hospital and says, hey, would you be interested in doing a grand rounds? And we can work with the doctor on getting the material, getting an expert, um, all that stuff and working with you to feel comfortable sharing your story. So that's another aspect of the grand rounds team. There's also a VEDS awareness team. This is for people who wanna go and bring information like the first responder quick guide to the first responders or do an awareness table, or anything like that. So you can sign up for that team and our volunteer coordinator um, should be reaching out to you with information that you can provide or get, you know, work with you to kind of, kind of get an idea of what it is that you want to do. There's also a number of Marfan Foundation volunteer teams and we do have people with us on these teams. Um, there's social media, legislative, school nurses. Uh, there's a lot of different ways to get involved and it could be you wanna 
volunteer at an event and pass out t-shirts at a walk or something that's really important. We also have uh, volunteers on our professional advisory board and scientific advisory board. These are the medical professionals and researchers that really guide what we do at the Markman Foundation or are there to provide medical um, knowledge to community members and the doctors. Um, so they're, they're really important volunteers as well. And also our vet steering committee is critical to what we do. They've been the thought leaders in guiding everything that we've done in the last three and a half years. And they will be the thought leaders in guiding what we do in the future. Um, we have one dedicated administrative volunteer who orders all of those medical IDs. And those medical IDs, I think we've ordered 222 now. It's to members of our community who are genetically confirmed. So really wonderful program. We couldn't really run that program effectively without that volunteer. So if that volunteer is here today, thank you. And we also have a volunteer leadership committee through the Markan Foundation that some of our community members are involved in. And I just wanted to give a, a brief shout out to grants and major gifts because these are another really important part of what we do. And a lot of these like major gifts are like they're a result of a connection with a community member or you know, a community member's connection with somebody else that kind of results in somebody wanting to donate in a major way. And a lot of times these can be things that uh, really impact a very specific area like a grant. Um, one example is the Emergency Awareness Project that's funded by the Daskal Family Foundation. He reached out to us wanting to impact the emergency room situation. And we worked with him on developing a program that not only funds these free medical IDs that we provide, but also funds emergency medical professional awareness marketing. So this is like ads and stories to organizations that are serving professionals in that field, in the emergency field. And then also funds 100 free um, CME and CNE courses for those professionals. That's a really important aspect of what we do. Another example is this emergency experience survey that I mentioned that we're doing through the Vets Collaborative. This survey is intended once it's launched to gather the experiences of our community members in the emergency rooms and then analyze that data and publish it in an emergency medicine journal, which is where a lot of the emergency medical professionals get their trusted information. And so we hope to kind of get in front of them with this issue with data that we collect to show, hey, there is potentially a problem here that we can address. Um, so Walk With Deco is an organization that we love and they fund, funded the analysis of the emergency experience survey. So be on the lookout for that survey. There's been some delays. It was supposed to launch a couple months ago, but we do hope that it will launch uh, in the very near future and it will be open for I think two or three months to gather information. Those are just a couple examples. There's more that we could give, but I just wanted to show you how, how these major gifts can really impact uh, what we're able to do. So with that, I'm gonna stop sharing and we have plenty of time, I think, for a Q&A, even though we did start late because we had that technical issue. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop sharing my screen and go over to the Q&A. Thank you everybody for joining. Joe, do you wanna mention anything before we go to the Q&A? No, I think you nope. did. Okay. Great job. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So uh, Fran asked if we're going to have a new website for the Vets Collaborative now that Dr. Shalhoub is in Portland. That is a really great question. So the way that we worked this out with the Vets Collaborative is that the research study portion of the Vets Collaborative, the natural history study, is staying with Dr. Shalhoub and at OHSU. So there should be a separate website for that, I think, or um, you can reach out to their team. I think it's Vets Collab or it's on our website, uh, the, the email address, vetscole at ohsu.edu, I think is the address to email to get involved in that study. The other portion of the Vets Collaborative is that connection piece, um, you know, the work that we did on the emergency experience survey and getting the design of that accomplished. Um, like those regular meetings, and that lives on our website on the Vets Movement. So if you go on our website and go to research, there's a page specifically for that, for that, and you can sign up to be part of the Vets Collaborative there, and that would be for, you know, being part of those meetings and part of that kind of collaborative approach of uh, research with the community. So I think 
that should answer your question, Fran, but if I didn't answer your question, um, let me know and I will try to do a better job of answering that. I think it's a little kind of, it's in flux and a little complicated right now with the shift, but all the information, including that link to the email address for the Beds Natural History Study is on that page on our website. If you have any other questions, oh good, okay, there's another question in the Q&A. Oh, Fran gets it. Thank you, Fran, for letting me know that yeah. I answered your question. <laughs> that was really helpful. Happy to answer any other questions. I know we have a small group here tonight, but this will be available on our YouTube channel in the next few days um, for anybody who missed the recording uh, or missed the webinar live will be able to answer that. I'm trying to think if there's any common questions we get that I could throw in here. Can you think of any that we normally get? Um, no, but I think we could just mention one other thing about the institutional directory for VEDS um, and that we work with all of our professional advisory board uh, members and members throughout the country that have at least coordinated clinics or some expertise in treating these vascular um, disorders, Marfan, Lowy's Dietz, and VEDS. And um, they're a reference for the VEDS community to find somebody knowledgeable. And uh, I think that's a, a really important um, aspect of this when you're looking for care and looking for knowledgeable care. Yeah, thank you for mentioning that. I also wanna mention we have a webinar that we did with Peter Byers about organizing your care team. I think that was one really good highlight webinar that we did and um, also have a page on our website about how to put your care team together and what you should be looking for. That's a resource I think it's really important for newly diagnosed folks and even people who uh, were diagnosed a long time ago and have never been successful in creating a good care team because the knowledge I think that was out there years ago is not the same as it is now. I think that the knowledge has improved, the number of physicians that are knowledgeable about beds has improved or at least have it in their radar. I think we've been able to impact a lot of change over the last few years as a community, both through the beds collaborative and the beds movement. And I think the experience hopefully would be different now than it was 10 years ago. Okay, well, if we don't have any other questions, I think that we can probably end it there. I just want to say thank you for joining us tonight and thank you for your support as a community of the VEDS movement. This is something that's obviously very close to my heart. It's my baby and I know that I will be you know, leaving the VEDS movement in the next couple of weeks and passing it on to a successor, but I really truly believe in everything we've been able to accomplish and I I'm so grateful for the foundation uh, taking VEDS under their wing. So thanks, Joe, for your support in this as well and for everything that you've done to make this a reality for the VEDS community. Glad to be of help and will be of help in the future. So, all right. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. Have a wonderful evening. Bye.